Much like any other K-pop artist, Seventeen also had to follow certain rules set up by their agency, Pledis Entertainment. Their rules might be a little different from other companies. For example, most entertainment agencies are strictly against dating and issue a so-called dating ban on their idols. However, artists under Pledis are free to date whoever they want, and dating is even encouraged by the company. Unfortunately, there is simply no time for dating since they're pretty busy. While Seventeen and other Pledis artists were allowed to have relationships, the agency wasn't so lenient in other aspects. Seventeen are known as one of the funniest and most easygoing K-pop groups. They never fail to bring a smile to their fans' faces, and their YouTube show Going Seventeen is proof of how hilarious these guys can be. Watching the show, most people think that Seventeen are just naturally great at being funny, but they actually had to take comedy classes when they were trainees. When Hoshi revealed this unexpected memory of their trainee days, many of their fans were surprised. Hoshi appeared in an interview with the comedian Jong Doyeon where he shared that he still remembers the three keys of comedy which they had to learn as trainees. Hearing Hoshi recite the three keys, Doyeon couldn't hide her surprise, adding that even she didn't know what they were. Doyeon then asked Hoshi who is the member that improved the most when it comes to comedy, and Hoshi's answer served as a confirmation that the boys must have gotten some kind of media training before. Hoshi shared that they were trained in which way to answer similar questions, and the agency always told them to answer in a way that wouldn't make the group look bad. They also often read the newspaper and made daily logs when they were trainees, which was a pleasant surprise to their fans. However, there was one rule that Pledis implemented on their trainees that even BTS's Suga was shocked to hear. In August of this year, the former member of New East, Min Hyun was a guest on Suga's YouTube show Suchuita. During the episode, Min Hyun revealed the hardest part of being a trainee under Pledis. Even though it wasn't a 17 member to share this info, some of the members joined the agency around the same time as Min Hyun. Min Hyun debuted in 2012 after being a trainee for around two years, and 17's leader S. Kuz joined the agency in 2010. Hoshi and Wanwu became trainees in 2011, so it's very likely that this ridiculous rule applied to some 17 members as well. Min Hyun revealed that their agency made them drink a lot of milk when they were trainees to allegedly support their growth. The agency made them drink around 1.2 liters of milk, which Min Hyun found unexpectedly difficult. Suga wondered why an entertainment company would implement such a weird rule, to which Min Hyun theorized that it was because the company wanted them to grow taller. To Min Hyun, drinking this much milk was harder than the training itself because he quickly grew to hate it. Unfortunately, the agency was extremely strict about this rule and the trainees weren't able to leave the building until they drank the required amount of milk. This confession went viral on Twitter, with many people expressing their distaste towards this milk training. They couldn't imagine how difficult it was to have to go through this every single day, especially for those who were possibly lactose intolerant. There were a few who were pleased that the agency cared about the trainees' nutrition, but the majority of netizens thought this rule simply crossed the line. During one of their broadcasts from 2019, Hoshi shared that they had to take Korean traditional classes and particularly Jong Han never missed any of those classes, even if he wasn't feeling well. The situation surrounding Pledis at that time only added to the worries they had before their debut. Seventeen were actually set to debut in 2013, but Pledis's financial situation plummeted and the company went bankrupt, losing all the finances they prepared for Seventeen's debut. Because their company was unable to provide them with things necessary for their promotions, the boys had to take the matter into their own hands. On top of choreographing their dances and composing and producing all of their songs thanks to Woozy's hard work, the boys had to take on the tasks their management was originally supposed to do. In the early beginnings, Mingyu drew and printed out promotional stickers and even designed cute merch for their fans. Hoping to give the group larger exposure, Sung Kwan decided to reach out to different variety shows to promote Seventeen. It's kind of insane that idols have to go around and ask producers if they'd have them on their program, but it shows how bad the situation was back then for the agency. Even though the vice president of Pledis sold his house and those funds went straight to Seventeen's debut, the situation didn't get any better for a long time. For weeks, the company couldn't provide the members with the equipment necessary for their performances. During music shows, the members were seen without professional earrings. They either wore earphones or didn't wear anything at all. The company couldn't even buy them the cheapest earphones and the boys were forced to pay for them themselves. Not to mention that some of the members were still in school during during their debut, so it was difficult for them to financially support themselves. Other members begged their parents to purchase the earphones. Sun Kwan, who is the main vocalist of the group and should have been the first one to get professional equipment, was seen performing with ordinary earphones, and S. Kuz had his earphones taped to his ear. Because their agency failed to provide them with things crucial for their performances, it was impossible for the group to live in a space that would be comfortable for all 13 members. For a long time, the boys had to endure living in small dorms that often 
felt cramped up. Even well into their career, Seventeen still lived in those dorms, and they often talked about feeling like they had zero personal space. Vernon once mentioned that while he liked the fact that he never felt lonely living with so many people, he also didn't have any privacy. Sun Quan added that he didn't have a personal space either, and that he could only dream about having his own dressing room. From closets to bathrooms, the boys had to share everything, and it's safe to say that the tension was often high. Just imagine coming home from hours-long dance practice and not having enough space to wind down and relax. Because the 13 of them used to share only one bathroom, the members agreed that they had to shower only for five minutes. Seventeen didn't even have those five minutes of privacy during the shower because there were always three to four members showering at the same time. Thankfully, their living situation has significantly improved over time and they don't have to share the shower anymore. During their trainee days, the boys weren't allowed to speak in dialects. It doesn't sound like a real rule an entertainment company would have, but there was an instance from 2013 where Wanwu was scolded for speaking with an accent. In the video clip, Wanwu introduces himself in a dialect of the region he comes from, but a staff member quickly scolds him by saying, What did we say we do when you speak in dialect? We'll see you after this. There have been numerous reports that Seventeen had to endure intense things from the staff, including name-calling and physical punishment as well. In a picture that circulated online years ago, some of the members are seen doing a plank as a punishment. On top of dancing from dusk till dawn, the boys followed a rigorous workout routine as trainees that went viral a few years ago. Seeing how many steps their workout routine had, netizens wondered just how they got through it all. Although Seventeen are incredibly diligent, it doesn't mean they have to listen to everything their agency says. In July of 2023, Mingyu went viral for indirectly responding to a ridiculous rule that HYBE created for the group and team. Since Pletus is now directly under HYBE labels, many Karats were happy to see Mingyu rebel against their agency. A fan of and team attended one of the fan sign events the group held in July and shared their experience on Twitter. Netizens were surprised to hear about the very strict rules that were put into place for the group's fan sign. In particular, the tweet received a lot of attention after it revealed that most of the fan sign items were reviewed by staff members. One of the items then ended up being rejected because anything that was slightly girly was prohibited. The netizen shared that the staff members wrote down all 100 names of the fans that were attending and even chose the album pages for the boys to sign. The fans were then ordered to put their fan sign gifts in a basket before the event started. The netizen then shared that their gift had a ribbon on it, which is why their item was rejected. Understandably, netizens were surprised that someone even came up with this rule in the first place. A few days after the tweet went semi-viral, Seventeen had their fan sign event in Macau where Mingyu was seen wearing a floral wedding veil, looking like he was having a lot of fun. Both international and Korean fans shared pictures and videos of Mingyu wearing the veil, commenting that Kim Mingyu proves that true masculinity doesn't disappear because you wear some ribbons. Seventeen's fans were also grateful that HYBE didn't try to push this ridiculous rule on them as well as seeing the boys in different costumes and headbands is always the best part of their fan signs. Let us know your thoughts in the comments below and thank you for watching.